Saturday will mark two years since Russia invaded Ukraine. And while the news is often grim, tonight we want to highlight the work of the Superhuman Center, a state-of-the-art medical center helping brave Ukrainian soldiers and civilians wounded in the fighting by providing prosthetics and rehab. I'm joined now by Superhuman Center founder Andrei Stefnitzer. Andre, really appreciate your time tonight. Uh, when we talk about the number of civilians wounded so far in Ukraine, uh, uh, 20,000 at least, it's hard to quantify sometimes, and that's just civilians. I'm curious how you decided to start Superhumans. Was it that need of, of people needing help? Thanks, Graham, for having me. Uh, first of all, we, we, we're not exactly sure how many civilians are uh, dead and wounded because we still don't have access to many of our territories. Uh, for example, Mariupol is, uh, is, is, is currently occupied, so we, we're not sure. The, the forecast there is just traumatic. Uh, I cannot even number. It's, it's many thousands of people that are considered killed, civilians that are considered killed in Mariupol. But talking about prosthetics, uh, the, the, the data is classified, but from what we can tell, uh, it's about 40 to 45,000 people who are in need of prosthetics right now and as a result of this horrific war in Ukraine. And the amount of uh, prosthetics that Ukraine is doing right now is uh, really, really small. It's, it's about three to 350 prosthetics per month in total. So this is how we came up with the idea that we need to, to, to create a center of excellence and we need to bring this expertise in Ukraine, to Ukraine which basically never existed in Ukraine because there was no need. The numbers are truly staggering when you explain it like that. So when you talk about the people that come into Superhuman Center, what is the typical person when they come to you? Uh, what kind of shape are they in? Are they, it seems like, probably suffering mentally as well? Uh, and then what's the typical process when you take someone in? Uh, it's a great question, Graham. Um, so we, we receive patients, uh, we don't distinguish military or civilians. For us, they're all victims of war. And the first thing that we do is we do psychological assessment because all the services that we provide are free of charge. And we have to make sure that we invest, sort of invest into um, uh, the, the people that are capable of, uh, you know, integrating back into the society. So we do a psychological assessment, we do a drug test, we do general assessment, and then we put the person into the program. And basically, it's a multidisciplinary team that works with the patients uh, from there on. And, and then really, it's everything up to the patient when uh, he or she can get verticalized. <clears throat> I have a I have a story that I that I always mention. Um, so we have two similar cases uh, of uh, patients that lost both of their limbs, both of their legs, and uh, one of them got on his two feet um, within few three weeks time, and the other one we just couldn't verticalize for um, six weeks. So we went to our multidisciplinary team and we asked them, what is the, what is the case here? Uh, and, and they told us a very simple answer. Uh, basically, one of them uh, had a baby coming. His wife was pregnant four or five months into. And he promised his wife he's going to hold his baby with uh, standing on his two legs. That's the end of the story. And he was really working hard to, to get verticalized because it involves, apart from psychological efforts, it involves a lot of physical training and training the muscles that you never had. Also, you have to make sure you're not afraid of falling because if you are afraid of falling, um, you will you will have struggle to 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 get up. So our goal is to find this motivation of our patients and uh, and make sure they work into this dream, into their into their goal. Uh, and that's how we that's how we work with them. Basically, after they get their prosthesis. We learn that we teach them how to how to walk and how to walk and to run, etc. But our main goal is to reintegrate them back into the society to make sure that they are, um, you know, doing whatever they they want to do, having a job or um, um, uh, doing their activities. And this is our eventual goal. Uh, and for for a lot of them, it's um, it's not easy because they 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 be, they, they were evacuated by their fellow servicemen by their uh, brothers in arms, if you will. Uh, and the reason why they are evacuated with, uh, by military personnel is because uh, the, the medics are actually target number one for the Russian military. So most of our patients, if they are military, 
they get evacuated by their their brothers and then they want to repay the debt and they want to go back to to the army they want to go back to the front line obviously we, we try to encourage them to do whatever they can do in civilian life but after all it's their choice so uh, a lot of them a lot of them really want to go back and, and repay the debt wow what a sacrifice and just incredible stories uh, of the life-changing work you're doing. I, I know you mentioned it's all free as well. I know President Zelensky, the First Lady of Ukraine, are big supporters of superhumans. How has their support helped and how do you get your funding? So we fundraise all over the world. One of our biggest uh, donors uh, is actually um, a US citizen, Mr. Howard Buffett, the son of a famous Warren Buffett. Uh, and a lot of large companies, large corporations are helping us. We are right now at a level of about $50 million that we have fundraised within a year. We need around $100 million more to, to continue what we're doing to really make an impact because we are right now doing between 70 and 75 patients per month. And our total, total queue in Ukraine is about 40,000 people, as I mentioned. And our waiting list is more than 2,000 people. So we need to scale up. We need to open new superhuman centers around Ukraine. And we need to make sure those people are, you know, well, well, well treated and they get the best service so they can go back to their lives. It is truly incredible work. Uh, this website is superhumans.com. If people want to check it out, you can click English uh, and read all about it there and see some of these incredible stories. Andrei Stevnitzer, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you, Graham.